On today's show, I'm going to share three recipes that turn cookies into art form. A vanilla and chocolate shortbread, embellished wreaths, and cherry blossom cookies. Plus, we have a special guest, Robert Twardzik, who's going to share two creative cookie decorating techniques. All today on Martha Bates. Two flavors of dough are formed into a single log and then sliced and baked in my recipe for vanilla and chocolate shortbread swirls. But when it comes to gilding the lily, I like to use the same dough along with milk chocolate bark and pistachio moss to create a cookie that looks like unique faux bois. And faux bois means false wood. The cookie dough itself is quite easy to make. In the bowl of a stand mixer, combine one cup, two sticks of unsalted butter, at room temperature, and one and a half cups of confectioner's sugar. While that's mixing, sift your other dry ingredients, two cups of all-purpose flour. And a teaspoon of salt. Whisk these together, and just add your dry ingredients now half this dough is going to remain as I make it now, and half will be flavored and colored with cocoa. Don't forget to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, there, I think that's pretty well mixed. You can see it's crumbly. That's the nature of shortbread dough. So I'm just taking out half the dough. This can go back on the machine. And to the leftover dough in the bowl, we're going to add half a teaspoon of espresso powder and three tablespoons of cocoa powder into two tablespoons of hot water, making a little bit of a paste here, which will be added to our remaining shortbread dough. And the half of the dough that's on the counter, again, divide in half and wrap in plastic wrap. So you have two rectangles or squares of shortbread dough that are unflavored, uncolored, and you'll have two chocolate. So now the chocolate also gets wrapped in plastic. Now we're not going to chill this dough. This rolls out more easily, unchilled, to make it easier to get the dough very, very thin. So there, four neat little packages, approximately the same size. And I think we'll do it this way. Because now we're going to roll and layer and then roll again. And it is very, very thin dough when you're finished getting it to be 10 by 14. So now our four doughs are rolled out, nice and rectangular, parchment side down, plastic side up, peel the plastic away. And you have this lovely piece of dough. Now release the plastic from a vanilla sheet. And this is going to get put right on top of the chocolate. What we're going to do now is just stack, alternating the vanilla with the chocolate. Flatten out, you wanna make sure there's no air. You can use your hands, you could use your rolling pin to gently adhere one sheet to the next. Beautiful. Okay, so this can now be rolled up. And you wanna roll this up extremely firmly, tightly, so there's no air space. So toward the end here, it's easier than in the beginning to roll the dough. Now this gets rolled up in the parchment and chilled, but not before you make a cradle out of a recycled paper towel holder. Just cut this in half. This makes a nice round cradle for your dough. And put the dough right in here. This will keep it from flattening out. 
and you can refrigerate until firm for at least an hour, preferably a little longer or overnight. Or you can wrap this really well in plastic wrap and in a plastic bag and put it in your freezer for up to a month. So here we have the dough. It's chilled. It's like a rigid log. And we want to slice it now into quarter inch slices. So you can keep the log slices round if you like. Or I'll show you how to turn those slices into cross cut pieces of wood. Place on a baking sheet at least an inch apart. You do not want them touching. And cut absolutely perpendicular to your surface. So pretty. So if you want these to look a little bit more like wood, you can roll them a little bit more oval than round. See how different it looks when you roll them in an oval shape? This looks like a beautiful cross-cut piece of wood. Now make sure your oven is preheated to 325 degrees and bake until the cookies are firm to the touch and just lightly golden on the bottom. 18 minutes for the round quarter inch thick slices and about eight to 10 minutes for the rolled cookie like these. Cool them completely before decorating. So here they are, beautifully cooked. They're so beautiful. Now this is just melted milk chocolate you dip one little part of the cookie into the chocolate, wherever you wish, and then into Sicilian pistachios. These are the bright green pistachios. So you have a nice mossy edge. They have to dry completely before you serve them. And when you serve them, I would really show them off on a big tray. These are almost, almost too pretty to eat. Beautifully made into faux bois cross-cut pieces of wood. Enjoy. A buttery classic sugar cookies make delicious treats anytime, but you can heighten them to special occasion status by decorating them with fanciful combinations of candied ginger, violets, rose petals, and even more delicious and beautiful decorations. But first we need to make the dough. Two cups of flour. Quarter teaspoon of salt. Quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. You don't want a lot of leavening because you don't want these cookies to rise. You just want them light enough so that they are fantastic. Sift this together with your whisk and cream the butter. One stick, quarter of a pound of unsalted butter, one cup of sugar. Add that in a slow stream to your butter half a teaspoon of your best vanilla, and add one egg, and the zest of one orange. Usually the navel oranges have the best skin for zesting. And I just take off the orange peel, not the white or lighter pith underneath. Two tablespoons of cognac or brandy. And then you add your dry ingredients. Spoonful by spoonful until you have a nice dough. There. Wrap in a flat disc chill at least 45 minutes, preferably overnight on a tray. So here you have your dough. Lightly flour your rolling surface. And this dough should, if it is properly made, roll out very nicely. You can see specks of the orange zest. Keep loosening this dough because you do not want to struggle with the cookies. And they'll also get misshapen if they stick to the counter. You should get about 16 wreath cookies out of this batch of dough. You want uniform thickness, and the scraps can be rolled once more if you don't get too much flour in them. So now don't cut where there are any cracks, but 
position your cutter. There's one, two, and you want your sugar cookies to cut like this because you want to see the details of the fluted edges. And that was a three and a half inch cutter and then a one inch cutter to cut out the centers of the wreath. And these little pieces, I make these into little sable cookies. These big scraps will easily roll again. And now you don't have to turn your oven on quite yet because you have to chill these cookies for at least an hour. I put them in the refrigerator, then I bake them in a 350 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes. For the glaze, for these beautiful wreath cookies, I like to use a stand mixer fitted with a flat blade. Two cups of confectioner's sugar sifted. Very important to put it through a fine sieve. One egg white per two cups and a little bit of lemon juice. This really adds not only flavor, but also thins it out enough so that you can dip your cookies. You want thin, but not watery. Mm, this is looking good. You see, it's nice and drippy. You don't want it pipeable, you want it dippable. So take your cookie, hold it in your fingers, and just dip into the surface, shake off excess, and you have a very nice glaze. And you do not want the glaze to dry before you start decorating. So I'll do three or four and then apply my decorations. With clean fingers, you can start to decorate. These are edible flowers that are carefully sugared with finely strained egg white and super fine sugar. These are Italian pistachios sliced. Oh, how beautiful this is. That is so pretty and maybe a piece of candied ginger. That is so beautiful. Here's how they look. Make sure you let these dry completely at least two hours before you pack them up for transport or put them out for eating. Embellished wreaths, a classic reinvented. Enjoy. We're making a different shape of cookie and decorating it with a very beautiful image of cherry blossoms. Now I'm just rolling out another batch of the beautiful brandy flavored sugar cookie dough. This is a two and five eighths square biscuit cutter. Just line them up, bake just like you bake the wreath cookies. This will make around 16 cookies. Once you cut the cookies, chill them. Bake on parchment lined baking sheets at 350 degrees for about 16 to 18 minutes. So these cookies are very nice golden brown on the bottoms, just a little touch of golden brown around the edges, crispy, delicious. You can eat them like that, but when they are decorated, they are a totally different kettle of fish. <laughs> so um, two egg whites, just break them up with the paddle. The confectionery sugar has been finely sifted, two and a half cups. Once the egg whites are broken on low, just add the sugar spoon by spoon. This is traditional royal icing. And there's all different kinds of proportions, stiffer for piping, thinner for dipping, spreading, and for flavor, a tablespoon of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice. So if you find your royal icing just a little bit thicker, then you need add a little bit more liquid. You could add a little bit more egg white or a little bit more lemon juice. And we want to make a very, very pale pink. I'm using a gel food coloring. We want just one drop of the pink. So here we have our beautiful pale pink dipping, dipping frosting. Such a nice color and very appropriate for cherry blossoms. So now for glazing these cookies, dip just the surface, shake off the excess. You don't want it dripping down the sides of the cookie. And it should be a nice smooth glaze when it dries. If you do see any bubbles that bother you, you can take the point of a toothpick and just break the bubbles. 
glaze will dry smoothly. So proceed until you get all the cookies dipped and glazed. So here are cookies. They've dried for 12 hours. They are perfect square pink cookies. And on this, we're going to paint our branch of cherry blossoms with the royal icing, a little bit thicker than we used for the dipping. So here's the same icing that we had. We want to thicken this so it will go uh, into a pastry bag. Otherwise, it'll just run all over the place. So you thicken that with sifted confectioner's sugar. And we're making three tones of pink for the blossoms. Now the frosting, if you want to save it overnight, make sure that you put it in a smaller bowl and cover it very tightly with plastic wrap. And make sure that when you're wrapping it, uh, put the plastic right on the surface. Now this is our pale pink, so I'll just keep this pale. And we want to make some a deeper shade of pink and some even deeper shade than that. Use the same gel food coloring. You can use a toothpick to add color. That's one color, and then this one we want deeper. Do not get this on your clothes because you will have pink clothes. <laughs> I have bags already prepared. This is our deepest pink, medium, and our very pale. Now we need our branches too on the cookies. And for that, we use a brown luster dust and we want to liquefy that. And the best thing to liquefy these colored dusts with is vodka. Higher the alcohol content, the better, because you're just making a paint and you want it to dry almost instantaneously. And you want to put a pretty branch, sort of mimic a tree. And then it's dry already. Then you just make little dots. This is a tiny little round tip, probably the smallest round tip, a two or a four. And you can use a star tip or a round tip. Then you can add the pink. And it does look like cherry blossoms. They're so beautiful. And you don't want to spend too, too much time decorating your cookies. And do you know why? Because it takes an instant to eat one. So the longer you spend, the worse you feel when whoever's going to have a cookie comes in and just munches something. So taking more than just a few minutes, I think, is a little silly. Oh, and look how pretty that deep pink really does bring out the look of those cherry blossoms. But what a beautiful, beautiful branch of a Japanese cherry tree. Let these set at room temperature until dry. It's going to take at least four hours. You can store them and they'll last for, oh, at least a week. These are as pretty as any picture. Enjoy them. Here to share his lifelong passion for baking is fine confectionery purveyor, Robert Tardzik, who took his design background and applied it to his exquisitely decorated cookies. I'm so glad to have you on the show again. Thank you, Martha. It's so nice to have you here. And you decorate cookies with such artistry. Where did you learn how to do all of this? My mom and my grandmother initially, because they were great bakers. And then I went to, when I changed careers, I went to pastry school. And that's where the passion was really fueled by the artistry. So what kind of cookies make the best canvas for decorating, would you say? Well, obviously a rolled cookie, but most importantly, I usually use formulas low in baking powder because I don't like a, a, a spread. Right. And the other trick is to refrigerate them once they're cut before get them, baking. Get them really chilled before, yep. they, so they keep their beautiful mm -hmm. shapes. These are sugar cookies, and that's your own recipe mm -hmm. that you make. It's um, actually a variation of yours. Oh, it is? Do yeah. you have cognac your in roll, it? No, you I have, have no cognac? booze in it. Oh, no booze, but, okay. <laughs> but you, your rolled sugar cookie, oh, it's a beautiful do. cookie. It is, yeah, I love it. So yours are a little bit thicker than what I usually do. And well, because you handle them so much, Yes, it's important. So we are going to learn how Robert creates flowers using the brush embroidery technique, and also how to do this very fine piping of mm -hmm. lacy motifs. Mm -hmm. So what are your preferred tools? These are gum paste cutters. And I use these actually as templates for incising, you know, the cookie. 
in order to get the replication from cookie to cookie to cookie to oh, cookie, I, see. Oh, okay. I like to have it somewhat unified. Oh, so if you want to get a cookie here that looks pretty just much like the same. Yeah. cookie here. See, the placement's the same. Oh, yes. So they do a three-petal, a large three-petal small, and then a two-petal small. Oh, I see. Okay. So what should we start with? I want to show you how I create a guideline for the cookie to pipe on. So what I do is I take this, you know, the fondant cutter, and I decide where I want to place it. So I'll place it and just score it lightly ah, like that. So you, I can do that here? Do, yeah, I usually do two small and one large. How beautiful. Not cool? Yes, very cool. Now I go from the back. Some people will pipe yeah. from the front of no, the pedal. I, I, I like the back because you can come around the corner a lot. I would do one at a time. Okay. Because you don't want the icing to crust too much when you're about to brush it. Take each individual petal, you start, say, in the middle. So you just start dragging towards mm. what would be the center of the petal. Uh -huh. And you can control what it is you want to show, how much of the center you want exposed. And another trick you can do when you're doing brush embroidery, especially with floral motifs, you actually can create a squiggle line. It creates more of a ruffled petal edge, which is kind of cool as well. And then you just do the next one, right? Mm-hmm. And you can vary the thicknesses of each petal if you choose, like I just did on this one. So pretty. Now, I'll show you how you could pipe a center. Normally, I would like this to set, but because I'm going to leave so much space between what I just worked on and what I'm going to add, you can pipe the second set of petals. Oh, yeah, I saw that on that cookie. How nice that is. Having the template from the cutter is very, very good. Oh, yeah. You can get a look just like that. That looks like a real flower because the cookie is cut in a real flower shape. And now, how do you get this beautiful lacy? This looks almost Indian paisley lace. They're henna doodles. And what's great about these, it's literally a doodle. Look how beautiful these are. Those are some doodles, Robert. Yeah. I cannot believe those are doodles. It looks like you've applied lace to the top of this cookie. Yeah. And so you do it on squares like yes. that. Yes, I want to show you what I do with this cookie as well. You decide before you start, obviously, what kind of pattern. Do you want to work off the corner? Do you want to work on off a straight uh, angle? Right. You need to know how you're setting it up. Well, I could use this, right? Yes, and that you can create this arc yeah. across. Uh -huh. And I'll use the straight edge to create, I'll work on a straight uh, border design. And now it serves as a really good guide. You don't need much to start it, but once you have it down, it's quite easy. So there, that's a good beginning, right? Yep, that's beautiful. And then you can just do little dots, right? Everything, yep, dots, X's, cross shapes. Oh, mine's looking good. Looking very good. So there, my henna doodle is done. A little shaky, need a little bit more practice, but mine now I got the I got the method. And, and yours Mine too. is shaky too. Yeah, good. It's, it's all your fault. <laughs> so here we have henna doodles. If I can do it, you can do it, oh, Robert. Thank absolutely. you very much for showing oh, us you're welcome, Martha. these fantastic techniques. They are so beautiful and so colorful. Come thank again you. and visit absolutely. with us and, and teach us more. And thanks uh, to all of you at home for watching. See you next time on Martha Bakes. Using green frosting, pipe a stem. Using pink frosting and a petal tip, pipe two fan-shaped petals, slightly overlapping each other. Pipe two smaller petals over the first pair. Using a lighter frosting, pipe a center, pulling slightly down. Using green frosting, pipe some small leaves, and with a round tip, add a tendril for a decorative finish.